am Duncan MacLeod. Of the Clan MacLeod. My name is Ichabod Crane. My name's MacGyver. Colonel Jack O'Neill, SG-1. I am Batman! Hello, I'm the Doctor. So there's this man, he has a time machine. Up and down history he goes, zip, 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 getting into scrapes. For years, and maybe more than that, right, Mac? But, but how long has it been? Has it been six, seven years ago? Are you telling me that you built a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? Hey, now, wait a minute. Now, wait just a minute. Human beings were not meant to sit in little cubicles staring at computer screens all day. I've got something for you. Oh, uh, merci, Sonor. Just one more thing, sir. Oh, boy. Just like that. Bing, bang, boom. At this point, I'd settle for the boom. They'd love it here, don't you think? This is what I'm saying. And then, by the way, where is your podcast? Tell everybody that's here. Welcome to the Never Gets Old podcast podcast of all we love in TV, movies, music, and comics, with your hosts, Mac Jackson and Nathan Shell. Subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Facebook, and YouTube. Donations at paypal.com at macwjackson at comcast.net. Listen to my taping songs, DJ saying that they're too long, his guitar may Hi, everybody. Welcome to the latest episode of the Never Gets Old podcast. I'm your host, Mac Jackson. And I'm Nathan Schell. We got rumors, good stuff coming from Stargate, Quantum Leap, random things I'm sure we're going to throw at you. Oh, yeah. Um, We rarely stay on one topic. (laughs) (laughs) Well, first and foremost, I want to celebrate some stuff in the world of entertainment, such as the likelihood now more than ever that we are getting new Stargate. Yeah, I've been hearing like cursory stuff and I've been trying not to get my hopes up too much because I don't want to I don't want to get my hopes dashed. Right. You know. Right. Well, yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's start at the very beginning. No. Um I you know, I check out other other Blips Breeders. and and podcasts if they mention possible new Stargate and I'm always like you said skeptical and until we hear it officially mm. it's all up in the air. Well, there's a podcast called um, Sidetrack. Okay. Uh, and I heard you mentioned them before. Yeah, and they kind of post every week about something. And it could be a quick thing, could be a longer discussion between the three hosts. And well, the 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 main host has connections apparently with people who work at Amazon or MGM. And so he's kind of getting the dirt. And again, he's where we are at the end. He goes, it doesn't really matter what I say until we officially hear it. You yeah, know, these, these things that I'm hearing, you know, in the rumor mill, so to speak. Anything now is great, but until we see it on the screen, yep. it's still hoping. But let me give you the <laughs> the rundown. So ever since Amazon bought MGM and had the rights to James Bond and uh, yeah, they wanted to add it, they wanted to add the James Bond film catalog to their streaming service. And Stargate, mm-hmm. and well, okay, nothing has happened. Uh, anybody out there who's been on Twitter or Facebook, we've all been going, Hey, hey, we want an incontinuity, you know, show, pick it up. Just don't, don't God, don't do a reboot. You do a reboot, you don't bother. Just yeah, don't. You, you end up shooting 99% of the time, you end up shooting yourself in the foot. If not, MacGyver has proved. Anything. It's don't, MacGyver. don't touch 
the holiness that is a great epic. Oh yeah. Well, show. And you and I've talked to, to great lengths that you know Stargate's one of those shows that, like the original MacGyver, holds up fairly well. More than fairly well. It doesn't age. I'm, at all. I'm being. I'm trying to be generous because I know there's love and hate with uh, Stargate Universe. Yeah, but it's still part of the thing. It's still, yeah, you know, yeah. even if you just I, stick with SG-1, you go, perfect show for eight years. Like, it really can't. It's undeniable. Yeah. So, but, yeah. Yeah, I think the only thing that hurt it was they could have re- they could have laid the breadcrumbs for, like, the Ori storyline earlier in the series, kind of like with what they did with, like, the Replicators and things like that sure well but, you know, you know Ori, saying, i never had a problem with the Ori. i thought oh, yeah no neither did great, I. I a deep philosophical kind of enemy and it was really cool that wasn't the problem that i had but anyway yeah i want to stay on topic i don't yeah. want to get off this yeah. so we haven't heard anything and right. we've been doing hashtag we want stargate hashtag save stargate hashtag get off your butt hashtag, give us some more yeah. freaking stargate Hashtag everything Stargate. Yeah. yeah. Well, finally, it looks like they're moving forward. Uh, I'm trying to give you th- everybody this as, as quick and brief as possible so you don't zone out. But essentially, from what they said was they couldn't move forward on anything until they had someone in place. Because Amazon is was not a movie company. No. Amazon was the store that you bought crap from. And now yeah. they're so powerful, they're in production of stuff but yeah they've got their their own company within them that does the i mean they've got lord of the rings power of the rings or whatever it's called you know there you have it so other projects and they also want to do a um the show that christopher judge does the what is it gods of war yeah they want to do a series on they want to do a yeah. series and originally what i had heard was that Whoever, when they were at the table, they're like, we're going to give most of the budget to Gods of War. We don't, you know, hmm, good luck. We'll give you a half for Stargate. And uh, there's a couple of companies. There was Penguin in a Parka, I believe, is who's fighting for it. And Bad Robot, I think, was the other one. Okay. And they're like, you know, you, you don't understand. You can't slash our budget. This is, you guys clearly don't know what you have. Yeah, I mean it, the the term "sleeping giant" has been bounced around, and duh. Yeah, I mean Stargate's one of those shows that, unlike with Star Trek, which is set hundreds of years in the future, and then you've got Star Wars, which is set a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Stargate's one of those sci-fi productions that it's now, it's current, it is today's technology it's today's influences it's it's something that even though the show has been out for well since the late 90s it still is relevant you know between the subject matter and everything it's it's not like they have to oh well we need to come up with a futuristic or a utilitarian looking thing no it's literally they can do it today and it's not like they have to go out of their way to build stuff that's insane looking well and more important what they don't seem to understand is they have such a fan base already that have been dying not just like oh wouldn't it be nice if no we've been fighting hard to bring this back and have it be in continuity so yeah they couldn't do it until they had someone in place to be in charge of their production, their movies, yeah. their show. Um, Showrunner or production manager or whatever. Yeah. No, someone to oversee their movies. Okay, so production manager for their uh, direct, uh I forget the term for it, but yeah. But Jennifer, I can't think of her last name. I think it starts with an I. I found her on Twitter and added her to any sort of post that I was going to make to say, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. If you don't bring back the main cast and make it in continuity, don't bother. Um, so they got them all together, and there were ideas pitched that I guess Bad Robot had wanted to do some terrible idea of, well, let's kill most of the cast, and 
let's start, you know, kind of from scratch with a whole new group of blah, blah, blah. And, oh, we're going to bring Ra. Ra's going to be the villain. Ra was dead in the first movie. Right. See the face you're making? Gladly, oh. thankfully, people in the room did that too and said no. So that didn't wasn't going to happen. But that got me nervous. Sorry. I didn't mean to just, like, chuck my glasses. No, just no, no. You're... That was the right reaction. So, okay, so that's off the table. Now they do apparently, and again, all rumors, all from what I'm hearing though, uh, in continuity, okay. they've already approached people from various shows. Uh, okay. Michael Shanks, Amanda Tapping, Robert, Carlisle, uh, David Blue. This is what they said. So yeah. they've already kind of like put the feelers out there to say, hey, are you guys interested if we do this? Mm -hmm. uh, so apparently the woman in charge, Jennifer, I can't think of her name, wants to do, instead of doing a, right, doing a series, mm -hmm. which is the way to go with this, this is not a two hour, hey, let's kind of test the waters. Give us a series, go. Um, she is... All about, no, I want to do a movie because I'm in charge of movies. So I think movies are the way to movies, movies, movies. And that way, if the movie does well, then we can move on to a series. No, no, no. The, the water has okay, so been tested for I, 10 years. I can I can understand her, her. I mean, at least she's willing to give it a movie. So there's that. But, but she's I not understanding. Like it, It's like someone yeah. coming in off the street who's living 30 years ago where movies were better than TV shows and going, here's how you do it. You win them over with the two hour sampler. Yeah. Now I would, the way I honestly would approach it would be you do the two hour movie for the beginning of the series and just do like what they did with, with it when it was on Showtime, the two hour movie. Hey, come back next week. We'll have the, the next episode. You're thinking the TV. Next she wants to do movie as in you go buy a ticket and sit in a theater kind of movie. Yeah, and see, that's... That's stupid. That doesn't work anymore. No. What they what they realistically should... If, they, if she insists on doing that, you release it in the theaters one week early, and then you do it through your streaming service. Because we live in a world where streaming is unfortunately... Here to, oh, to go. Let's say unfortunately, but streaming is now. That right. is that is the way the world is going. Right. And if you're doing it to test the waters, don't bother. Because one, you're not going to get new people interested if they have to go spend $14 in a movie theater. Exactly. Well, that and with releasing a movie, there's so ooh, pardon me. There's so much overhead. You've got the You've got the production costs of the production itself. Then it's, oh, hey, we're going to release it in a bunch of theaters. You got to pay those fees. Right. You right. Know, it's, there, it's, I don't want to say it's a scam, but it is, it is a, a long-term investment where unless you release it at the right time of year in the right demographics, you're not going to make your money back. Exactly. This is what I'm saying. So, and and again, this is not a new concept idea of, oh, I don't know if this would work as a TV show. We have 20 years of proven. Okay. Yeah. So, next thing I hear is everybody else has since, after she made that decision, called her back into the room and said, no. The rest of us are telling you a TV series. You have to commit to a television series. Yeah. We have three shows that should not have ended at all. Yeah. It was only because of the MGM sci-fi idiots that Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, realistically, they could do you know, TV shows nowadays don't need 20 plus episodes. I want 20 plus episodes. Oh, yeah. Don't get me wrong. I, I want 20 plus episode seasons. You need that. Yeah. Because yes. you can't do six. If you're going to do six, you go, ah, that was like a start of a mini scene. Where'd everybody go? Do you yeah, remember that, Stargate Origins? Remember that thing? Yeah. Like, that's 
like doing the six episode if it's like a one-time event okay that i could i could kind of get behind but if you're doing a series the lowest number of episodes you'd want to do is 10 episodes Very but at that point it's they've got to be solid episodes you can't have any right fun. and if you're coming back with this uh franchise we need to let it breathe we need yeah. to you know let, let it, call it stargate command like i said paul malozzi thought this was a good idea too yeah you call it stargate command and that way you get to do episodes where they save the, the destiny and the episodes where they get atlantis to do its thing and yeah and, 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 and everybody's and involved that and if you have you know say richard dean anderson wants to come back for you yes. know hey i i want to come back but you know i'm only willing to work until i'm x amount age okay fine you have him in and then when he hits his retirement age say let us know when you want to come back, even if it's only for like a, right. a pop in or right. a, a video call or whatever. Yeah, that make way the cameos. Come on, you're still part of the family, which he yeah. said he's all about. Yeah, I mean, they kind. I feel like they kind of been doing that with uh, CSI Vegas. Right. Exactly. I'm a, I'm a couple episodes behind because I didn't realize I thought it was over for the season. No, 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 no. So like they they brought in Sarah Sidling Grissom in the first season. They brought in Catherine in the second season and. Apparently they brought uh, Greg back. You're going to bring Greg back. Yeah, I'm not. That's a way that you can bring in your older cast members, your original cast members, and still have that revitalization of the newer cast members. Yep. Because let's be honest, at the end of the day, Stargate Command would be centralized around a military setting. Yeah. They're always rotating staff in and out, just like anywhere, you know. And and you're you're not going to sway people with hey, here's new Jimmy. Like, it doesn't yeah. work. You need to have it be Jack, Daniel, Sam go, you know, we're here, and then ease those other people in, and then you go, okay, we're used to them, and that way when Jack and Sam and Daniel aren't yeah, around, Jack, not that I want them to go anywhere. I I, right. truly, I right. want my, my Jack O'Neill back all the time. Yeah. But, you know, to whatever degree that they're part of it, it's a lot easier to swallow if they're there and you go, this is our show. This is what we know. And then you yeah. accept the new. Yeah. Game. A prime example with like how they did it with CSI. You know, they brought Grissom in, they brought Sarah, they brought in brass. We already cared about them. And then seeing them interacting with the new people. Right. They got us to care about the new people right. that way. By the way, this season has been much better on their part than they yeah. were with you know Grissom, I'm like I don't care. Just show me Grissom. I I don't care about the rest yeah. of you. Now that Grissom, you know, isn't I think there, part of it is it got them the chance to kind of like flush out their portrayal of their character. Exactly, which exactly. is always good. Like with me, if a show gets the first season, I always kind of go in the first season like, okay, I'm gonna get kind of somewhat comfortable, but I know in season two that's when we're gonna really start seeing people hit their stride with their characters. Right. So. Uh, All right, so it they, sounds like they're more keen on the TV series end of thing. They're fighting her for that, which is the good fight. That's the what, yeah, I, I, you, you know, think beyond yourself and think about what you're dealing with. You have a guaranteed hit if you give us a new Stargate. Yeah. In continuity, if they dare reboot it, nobody will watch it. Think of all the people that love Stargate. You think they're going to let you ignore what we love? That would just, that'd be such a well, kick in the crotch. Well, that and it it's a slap in the face to what's already out there because they've shown you can do a myriad of different types of stories, different types of villains and things. Exactly. It, it's, a, it's a show that, you know, yeah, they touched on various uh, mythologies and things like that, but there's so many more mythologies out there. Now, and a lot of creative people out there that can look at the mythologies that they've touched on and mythologies that they haven't done and add to the mythology that is Stargate. Now, here's the problem. Here's the bad side. Of course. These freaking idiots don't think that they need Brad Wright, Paul Malozzi. Uh, Brad Wright had the new show scripted. Well, yeah, I was going to say, I remember he had done kind of like a tease thing. 
he's ready to go. And they go, thanks, but no thanks. We're going to do our own. Th Why would you not bring him in? He's the showrunner of it. Yeah, he's the but, original showrunner. He's got the experience. He's got the passion. He's yeah. got the know-how. He's the Stargate guy. And quite honestly, I remember we had done an episode a while ago about the showrunner's uh, oath. oath. The showrunner's oath. He's the he's like the template for that. Yeah. Him and him and yeah, Stephen Downing are the two that you're like, these are the two perfect shows, MacGyver, Stargate SG1, coincidentally, because everybody was on the same page. And who was yeah, they, that boat was the care. showrunner. Yeah. So and not to mention, it would it would lighten Amazon's load worrying about this at all. Yeah, because they could be like, oh well. These guys did several. Oh, they got this. Yeah, we'll we'll show it. You guys handle it. Let us know when it's ready, and we'll pop it on Amazon. Yeah, done. But instead, you got the egos, which is what scares the crap out of me. That classic. I need to show that it's my baby. Yeah, my movie. Like, stop. Think just think please. more than yourself. Please, this is bigger than you. It's bigger than all of us. Just do it right. The, by the way, so simple where to pick up with all of this. I mean, yeah, yeah I could write it in my sleep. Yeah. So Absolutely. that is where we're at with the Stargate news. Um, they said they probably won't mention anything until, officially at least, until... You know, contracts are signed and they're already started production, blah, blah, Which blah. Which is blah. pretty standard stuff. Well, yeah. it's standard stuff, but again, <laughs> it yeah, the, the crap out of me it. because by that point, you either did it right or you did it wrong, and now we're yeah. in trouble, and holy crap, no. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, and ironically, like, with the uh, Stargate tabletop RPG that I, I, I'm doing... I came up with an idea that works continuity wise with everything that's going on, which was fun. But it's one of those makes me wonder if chip in the brain or it's going to be, okay, they just, I, I went, you know, I went left. They went full reverse. You know, I just, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what happens. I pray to God. Mm -hmm. It, it, it is that's that's the biggest fear of any fandom reboot you say reboot done 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 yeah. done i mean just done and think of how much stargate is part of our soul yeah for us to say kiss my rear end franchise yeah. that we love we'll stick to our other we, we will yeah. not follow yeah. whatever yeah. our, our franchise will exist up until this date yeah it's, and then the rest will be up to us but yeah i mean and like, there are some reboots that have done well, like Battlestar Galactica. Because it had to be. You, that that was that was not, didn't have the the legs. That was always a cult classic anyway. The original, yeah, the, you know, the original was it, cult. It never got to big heights like Stargate. It never got the mythology like Stargate. Yeah. You know, it, had the, it had, very much had the potential to. But sure. But again, it, it was a uh, Star Wars, you know... Rip off to, I mean, they were they were they made it because Star Wars was so popular. Yeah, it was a, I don't want to say clone. It was a reaction to Star. Uh, Star yeah, Wars. Star Wars. Yeah. So you Just know, like Star Trek and Star Wars, they reacted to each other a lot. Sure. Like the whole the whole reason Star the Star Trek movies happened was because, was because Star Lucas Wars. Star Wars. And Gene Roddenberry enjoyed Star Wars, so he. Yeah. He's like, made you know, the movie, which ironically. Part of the reason Star, you know, Star Wars happened was George Lucas had enjoyed Star Trek, so it's like they kind of like layered yeah. upon each other, and now look at them, you know. Yeah. Um. So. so that's that with the Stargate news. I pray to God we can report on. Holy crap! It's happening like it should have ten, twenty yeah. years ago. And you know what? Part of me is hoping that. We are surprised in a way that was like, oh, wow, okay, I didn't even think of doing something like that. You know what I mean? Yes. For me, again, you, it, the, I need two things. I need it to be in continuity. Number and, one, absolutely, full stop. And I need as much Jack there as possible. 
And I, yeah. and, I, and I need the confirmation that he and Sam are married. That's, I mean, that sounds like a little thing. Nope, that's a very valid thing. That is, by this point, even, look at, let me, I'll give you this scenario. Even if they say Jack is retired mm -hmm. and they have to, my idea, they call him back again because he's needed. You know, to, to whatever degree they have to call him back. He's retired. Okay, Sam could mention him like she should have in seasons nine and ten, and said, "Yeah, we're we're enjoying. The, we we go up to the cabin every weekend, and baba we 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 we." Because yes. then you go, "Tell us you're married, and then it'll, it'll never be worried about again." Well, and realistically, they wouldn't even necessarily have to do that much. All they'd have to do is show her wearing the freak a freaking wedding band. It doesn't have she to has be to say Jack. She has to say Jack because people would go, that doesn't mean it's Jack. She could have married Senator Perfect. Shlomo, you know. Well, let's be honest. We all know she's not going to. Well, she could have married that one senator. He not sacrificed himself. Yeah, I know. Not that guy. And we know Pete. So we don't Pete. need to mention Pete. <laughs> Pete who? Stalker, Stalker Pete does not need to be mentioned. But yeah, like. Simple requests and very easy ones to. Yeah, I'm telling you, I, they could have done this. Uh, I'm going to go down a rabbit hole. They could have done this and fixed this with one sentence during season nine or ten, and they didn't. Yep. And the fact that they, or in the fucking out, or the freaking two hundredth episode where he pops in for five fucking seconds. Sorry, right. I know we're trying not to cuss, but right. But but yeah, it, it, it again one of the biggest sins, which when I I catch. The season nine and ten for two seconds on on uh, Pluto. Mm -hmm. The blatant thing where Robert Cooper said, "Yeah, yeah, I know we should be mentioning Jack right here, but I'm not going to." And like, no, no, it's natural conversation. Obviously, you you're at Jack's freaking cabin. You can't mention that. Thanks, it's nice of Jack to let us use the cabin, even though he couldn't be here. Done. That's a two second thing to say. And they didn't, and it was they would do that every freaking episode. There was only a handful where General Landry was on the phone with Jack, you know. But there were so many, there were 95% of that of the opportunities were not taken to mention Jack, yeah. even on the very last episode where he should have not only been there. Yeah. I mean, come on. But but don't even mention him. You knew it was the last episode. Okay, see, so going down a rabbit hole. Let's move no, on. Let's move on. Well, yeah, so onward to the next topic. I got some rumors for season two of Quantum Leap. Okay. Uh, first of all, let's tell everybody. If you are not watching the new Quantum Leap, shame on you. Yeah. This is amazing. Yeah. I know early on it was being toted as i think a reboot i i know revival had been thrown around revival is the way to say revival it. is more in line with what it is it's not a reboot it's a yeah. revival uh a friend of mine i was actually talking with on friday i said you guys need to watch quantum leap monday i got a text message from them oh my god i'm loving this thank you for letting us know that it wasn't a reboot this has been phenomenal right exactly well okay so Let's go down the rabbit hole. First of all, let's assume everybody's watched the original Quantum Leap. Yeah, if, if not, it, go back and, re and watch can it. Very quickly and wonderfully and be thankful that you'll, you're watching it. There's a woman at work, Lori, who listens to the podcast. Lori, I told you, watch Quantum Leap. She watches the reality shows, Alec Vanderpump Rules and stuff, which is fine. But I'm yeah. like, if you want something to make you feel good and hopeful and just enjoy... Quantum Leap is where it's at. Oh, so. yeah. And it, it's one of those that realistically, you don't need to you don't need to start it from the beginning. You should at least watch the first couple episodes because it really... Oh, you're going to be... You, you, you can't kind of watch Quantum Leap, but yes. Well, no, 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 no. It's one of those that once you've seen the... Ep like, once you go through and watch the entire series, then you can go in and like Hey, I want to watch the I want to watch this episode, or I want to sure. watch that. Oh, episode. I have my favorites. Yeah, it's one of those that you really should watch from the beginning at least once, and then yes. once you've done that, 
then you can go back and be like, you know what? I really like the episode where. Oh yeah, know, definitely was Elvis. Or... We do that. We watch the Christmas episode every every holiday season. Absolutely. Um, but, but yeah, this the twenty. 22 23 season series yeah it is very season much six. it's season it's very six. much season six absolutely yeah. like when you had originally told me that before before i think the show had even aired i'm like okay we'll you know we'll have to see if that's very true and like within that first episode i think within like the first 20 minutes yep nope they're re- they're mentioning al they're mentioning sam that this is definitely season six right and they were so smart to do it, and they're so passionate about it. And it's Deborah Pratt, who's who's there every day on the set, who, you know, her and her husband are the creators and showrunners of the original, so they're both there for this. And when she... Uh, I listen to the two podcasts that they have. Um, I know there's others, but the two that I listen to are the Quantum Leap podcast, who I've done acting for when they did an audio series. Okay. And Fate's Wide Wheel, uh, which is a comment on one of the episodes when he leaps into the punk rocker, and that was the name of their song, was Fate's Wide Wheel. Deep Cut. Uh, if you didn't know it, you wouldn't know it was a quantum leap until you clicked on it. But anyway, yeah. both excellent podcasts that I love. And they are they work in conjunction. They're not, you know, yeah. vying, vying for each other's, like, time slot or whatever. They have each other on, and it's, you know, because we all yeah, love the same more stuff. more community type thing. Then. Yeah, I'm supposed to be on each of their shows at some point when they oh. have when they have an opening, because they're that popular, and they get the cast on. Like, oh, almost okay. every episode, they get, oh, and they'll get uh, Dean Jagaris or Gregaris, uh mentioned, butchering his name. Uh, Sorry, right. you'll probably get it right after we're off the air. Yeah. So, anyway, he's the, he's the one of the showrunners with uh, the uh, producer who was on Stargate, Martin okay. Garrow. Uh, so they are the ones who they know what they're doing. And he comes on. Well, he's like, you know what? While we're on here, beep, boop, beep, he texts like someone from the show to come on. Boop. And now they're a part of it. And it's great. And it's, and it's awesome. wonderful because they're, they're smart enough to ask the deep questions and they're going weekly. So they get a screener before it premieres so they can record on say Sunday okay premiere it immediately after the episode airs very cool so Monday or, or Tuesday morning I'm watching both of those podcasts or listening um and so you know the information that I get is from them and directly from the horse's mouth um they episode to episode know what they're doing and they they I don't want to say they took their time because that sounds like a bad thing, but they paced this so well. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, there are people, we live in the world where people want instant gratification. You know, they're used to binge watching a show. Yeah. Oh, I, I want to watch. I want to know why did he leap? Why did Ben leap? What does that mean? And blah, blah, blah. Well, if they don't get it, like we have friends I told you about that we recommend Stargate 2 and they won't bother to watch it. And we yeah. recommended Quantum Leap. They, yeah. watched, they said, well, we watched the first couple episodes. I said, yeah, and? Eh, is kind of their go-to response for anything wonderful. Eh. So we go, all right, we're not recommending anything good to you because you don't get it. Yeah. Um, but there were some people who, when the show premiered, they're like, all right, Addison's not Al. Well, no, she's not going to be. And if she tried to be Al, people would have been unhappy then, too. Yeah. And, you know, you, you got to let people grow into their character. Like Jen, you know, head of security, people didn't – I remember a couple people on the podcast were like, why is she even there? What's her point? Yeah. Well, how about you give her a couple freaking episodes to like, get her feet going? And then you go, oh, okay. Exactly. Flesh yeah. her out. Yeah. You know? and, and now you're really, like. I think people have forgotten how to watch TV mm-hmm. because they are so used to being able to sit down and binge an entire series, say, thanks to Netflix. Yeah. Because I think, I think Netflix is still the only one that drops all of something at one time. Yeah, which I don't most, like. Most things drop 
okay, they might drop like two episodes this week, but then they'll do like one, 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 you know. That's how you do it. That's yeah. you gotta give that space to let things just set that, up. And it keeps people coming back to your platform. Right. Well, this season, for anybody who hasn't watched it, it's it's now you could watch the whole season. So you want to binge it, go binge it. Yeah, now you can binge it. It's it was spectacular. Like spectacular. I I sat down and watched when I went to sit down to watch the last episode. I was relieved because one, I went in knowing that okay, it's the last episode. Because the second to last episode, the, the way they ended it, I almost chucked my controller through the TV because it was like, that's where you're gonna end the freaking episode. <laughs> holes, you know. But so well written, so well done. Like the entire cast from start to finish has been spectacular. Absolutely. Right. Right. I, 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 not only do I not have a problem with anybody on the cast as people, I love them. They're, they're oh. very much like, um, the actress who is Addison. Um, she, this is her first real acting gig. This is her first TV on film acting. Yeah. Um, she's adorable. She reminds me, it's the same way I felt about Amanda tapping. When you watch Carter, Carter is very, I got, you know, I'm here. I have a job to do. I'm going to say the serious stuff that needs to happen. But when you see Amanda tapping, she's hilarious and sweet oh, yeah. and funny and you want to hug her all the time. Well, that's how she is on Quantum Leap. You watch her and you're like, oh, you're just, I would enjoy everybody in that cast. I would love to spend time with, not because they're on a show, but because I wish they were my neighbor. And yeah, they just seem like just genuinely genuinely good people that yes you just want to sit and chat about whatever exactly like you're just like no you're fun people you're giving people you're loving people and you don't mind laughing and and you know being self-deprecating and and loving each other and loving the audience and they they listen to the podcast too so for all i know they may, may be listening up. to this so i you know it's wonderful to not only just accept these characters, but to root for them and go. Like at one point, you're like, "Wait, there's there's a mole." Yeah. Oh God, please! Is it one of the people in the background that we never talked to? Yeah, like it's gotta be one of the people in the soon, background. As soon as they did that, I was like, oh, "I'm about to get mad." But yeah, because if you make them one of them evil or one of them die, you're like, "Oh, God, I love them all. Please don't do that to any of them." They, yeah. We need them to be part of, part of this forever now. We don't yeah. want to have a quantum leap. Yeah. Without like with what they were kind of alluding to with Ian, I was like, uh, I don't know how I feel about this. Yeah, then, that was a heck of a thing. Because, yeah, oh, okay. For everybody, again, who hasn't watched this, get watching it. But part of the thing is we're still trying to get Sam home. The whole yeah. reason that uh, – here's what you need to know. Project Quantum Leap – I'm not going to go over the original concept. Sam was the leaper. At some point between the end of that show and now, we'll say 10 years ago, Project Quantum Leap that ran out of New Mexico uh, got shut down. The, yep, government, the government went, we're done. We're not going to try and save Sam anymore. Well, Al. Who at this point would be an admiral. He was an admiral. Was he an admiral? I couldn't remember. No, he's an admiral. Was he an admiral at the end of or during the the original series or not? Yeah, he was uh, uh, an admiral, and he never gave up trying to bring Sam home. Nope. So even though the government gave up on Sam, Al was always trying to get it going. So he teams up with Magic. Ernie Hudson plays the part. Yeah. Magic is someone who Sam leapt into in the original series. Yep. Oh, I mean that is that connective tissue already sold. Yep. So he teams up with him, gets him to run the new project Quantum Leap. Magic is also trying to get Sam home. Yeah, because he feels like the connection to him. It's my yeah, he, responsibility he to bring him. him home. Yeah. Um. Okay, so that's what you need to know. They're trying to bring Sam home. For some reason, uh, Ben Song steps into the accelerator prematurely. 
even though he wasn't even supposed to be the one to leave. Addison yeah, originally was supposed, it was supposed to, be to be Addison, yeah, because of her background and, and everything. Exactly. Uh, Caitlin Bassett is Addison. It was going to bother me until I said her name. Right. Um, she's wonderful. And uh, let's see. Nanrissa Lee, Ernie Hudson, Mason Alexander Park, and, mm -hmm. and Raymond Lee. They're the main cast. And they are wonderful. Spectacular. So I just want to make sure I, I said everybody's name. Yep. Um, so that's the idea. For whatever reason, Addison was Addison was military. She was prepping to be, even though this was years away from being ready, Addison was going to be the one to leap. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, her fiance, Ben, steps in and and poof, like sneaks off, doesn't tell anybody. Yeah. All of a sudden you find out that he 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 left. Yeah. So there's yeah. your premise. We're not gonna get into anything else because I don't want to spoil the, the enjoyment for everybody, but holy crap, there's there's what do they call it? The mystery box is how yeah. they describe because it's seems to be popular on on shows at the moment where there's an overall arc of why, when, and where. Yeah. Which I like I like the way that they did this in this show because it's they didn't pull a lost where they're throwing a thousand questions at you and like sprinkling the answers out. Right. Like you you get answers to these questions. I don't believe we end up we don't end the season with any question that was presented early on without some kind of resolution to some degree. Well now, the way the, the way the season it, ends, there right. is an there is a question at the end, but that's a normal thing. Yeah, they originally had planned, what if we got canceled? We had to wrap up the story, which I love them for this. Yeah. Uh, poor Dead Zone, for example, pops into my head, who never got resolution. But yeah, so, <clears throat> so they were prepared, what if they only got 10 episodes? All right, they'd have to wrap it up sooner, and this is how we do it. Mm -hmm. If we get the full season, we're still going to wrap up the question. We're not going to leave people dangling. Thank you. I love that so much. Yeah. Gregarious, Gregarious. I'm going to drive me nuts until I say his name correctly. The the showrunner. Dean Jagaris. That sounds pretty close. Let's go with that until he corrects me. Um, and hopefully it's so, done. <laughs> what? Hopefully it's done in a polite way. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah, he's a good guy. Um, but so, yeah, they do wrap up the questions. This is one arc of this season. Mm-hmm. Um, watch it, buckle up, enjoy it. Now, throughout the season, they never forget Sam Beckett, Al mm -hmm. Calavici. Al's daughter is in the show, who I yep. swear she better become a, a part of the team for season two. Yeah, I suspect she's going to be she's a... She's so popular. Yeah. Everybody loves her. They want her. In and also, you're connected to Al. You yeah, know? that that's a... That's a long-term connection to Al. Absolutely. So, okay. One thing I will tell people. They're trying to bring Ben home, by the way, through this whole Yeah, time. throughout this entire thing, they're trying to bring him home. And, and like, I love how they, they touch on the reasons why certain things are different between this uh, Quantum Leap project and the original. It, well, why it, is there it, no it waiting allows room? it. It because allows it. This, because of that, you know. And... Like I remember getting into a conversation with somebody at a at a convention. Well, they changed so much, and I sat down and I, and I episodes. I was like, "Well, in this episode, they explain why there's no waiting room. In this episode, they explain that." They're like, "Well, how do you know?" Because I paid attention. Yeah. And they're like, "Oh, I said you were on your phone, were you?" Well, I'm like, "Yeah." Then then don't. Yeah, I know. It, we had a friend. I told you who. I tried to get her to watch Daredevil. She's like, I don't understand. How come they're in that dark building right now? Are you working? Are you on your phone? Yeah. You don't get to watch Daredevil. Stop watching it. Girl. It's too good for you to sit there picking your nose instead you of like... Go, you can't go into a show the first time you're watching it and be distracted. The second, third time, sure, whatever. But when you're watching a show, you a be smart there. show. You're not watching reality TV where really who cares. Yeah. Scripted TV, if it's done right, you need to be pay attention. Horse blinders, like just yeah, it, it, because it pays off. It's not like it should be work. If a show feels like work, 
stop watching it. Exactly. Um, so, okay. Now, the way the episode ends, this isn't spoiling anything, the big mystery or anything, but they're trying to bring somebody home, Ben. Yeah. They show, oh, he's coming, we think he's coming, and they show somebody yeah. potentially coming through the accelerator. The forms start to take shape. And it shows, it ends on Addison's face, kind of like, I'm excited, I'm kind of confused, am I disappointed? Like, we don't know. Yeah. But there's something going on there with her, her facial expression, yeah. which is great because yeah. it leaves which us is, going, we don't know what she's thinking. Yeah, it's that they 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 cut it at a spot where it's like, I'm presuming in her eyes what she's seeing is whomever that is in the accelerator coming into corporealness. Yeah. We're seeing, she's. it's going to end up next season, they're going to have their back to her. And it could be Ben. It could be someone else. I don't think they're gonna. No, I don't think they're gonna have their back to them. I here's what I I dream happens, because in the show they address the fact that Al had passed away a year ago, just mm -hmm. like Dean Stockwell. So here's what I want to have happen. I I wrote. I said it better be Sam. They'd better because that way you. Uh, Deborah Pratt wants to do a Sam Beckett movie. Mm -hmm. Because she's like, there's no reason we can't do a franchise of Quantum Leap. We can have multiple leapers. We can have Sam movies. We can have it. Yeah. I love it. I love what she's saying. And she's so right on so many things. Um, and oh, when, when, when they did the first table read. Uh, and they were saying, you know, hi, I'm, you know. Raymond Lee, I play Ben Song. Hi, I mean they go through the table. They get to her and she goes, Hi, I'm Deborah Pratt. I'm keeper of the lore. Because she, yeah, that is her job, is to make sure things don't conflict. And I love it. are, yeah, her things are the four H's: history, heart, humor. History, heart, humor. Humility. No, 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 no. Heart. History, heart, humor. Anyway, look it up. Um, <laughs> she, that's her, that's her, her mantra. She goes to that, which is what yeah. all quantum leap should have. So here's how I would love to see the, the new season begin, because you can bring Sam home. You could also send him back out. You can, you can have Sam, if, if, they don't get if Scott Bakula is smart, he will now see, oh, they didn't do bad on this. I should be part of this. By the way, they've written the series around my character. I probably should pop in once in a while. Yeah. So they can have him come home and go, okay, I need a rest. See you guys later. Call me if you need me. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, that way he's available. He's back in our time. Whatever. There's the, the possibilities are endless. Absolutely. And in that and in that regards, it would give the character the downtime to one rest because right. the man theoretically the man's been leaping this entire time. Right, right. And you know, like Ben hasn't gotten much sleep, but yeah, because I think they're leaping into the the hosts who already have had sleep. Yeah, where Sam would tend to be able to stay a couple of days and actually sleep on you know in a bed. Exactly. Yeah. Which um, I think is interesting because they did touch on that in one of the episodes. I think it was the episode where he was, he was in the two, two or three. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're like, you know, you haven't. I, I don't feel like I'm tired. Like, hmm. Yeah, because it was either the boxer, or the the gunslinger, one of those two. I both, think they had mentioned both. it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's like, and they even touch on you know leaping outside of his own time span, which I thought was really. It. And the reason they, they allow that is because it's a different data into the accelerator so algorithm all that stuff all that really so great like, great you're not throwing away what we already know yeah. it's a different yeah it's it's like ziggy 2.0 right you know um so what i want to see happen and i actually wrote this in my head i, I could picture in my head and i got all filled up because i'm thinking of actually sam think of everything we know of sam think of all the years that have gone by you know, and he leaps back and you do the whole looking around 
you know, shocked. Everybody from the project runs into the accelerator room yeah. to see him. And he goes, am I home? And and they're like, yeah, you know, yeah, Dr. Beckett, you're home. Uh -huh. And he goes, where's Al? And gut punch, heart rip out right at that moment. Yep. And, but don't do a cutaway then. You don't go to commercial. Mm -hmm. You don't jump to Ben wherever he leapt, leaped. Um, you let that scene play out. Yep. Give and me I, a moment to have that reaction. But but the natural thing for a writer is to go cut scene right there as he asks, and they all look disappointed because they have to tell him, don't do that. Let it play mm -hmm. because he'll go, where's Hal? And they have to actually pause, walk up, very delicately tell him that he passed away and let Sam collapse on the floor. Mm -hmm. Let him cry because I cry just like thinking oh, about Oh, yeah. It. Because it's not like awful. these guys were best friends. I mean, and, God. Yeah. Brothers. I mean, the fact that Al never gave up to bring Sam home. Exactly. And then so and so did Magic. And Magic would mention, I promised Al that I would bring Sam home. Yep. You know, and it, it gives uh, them the, it gives them the opportunity to pay even more homage and respect to the original five seasons. Right, right, and then let Sam deal with that, and then you could do your cut scene to show Ben and carry on the episode. Because I understand pacing of television. I understand it's only forty something, but you need that scene alone mm -hmm. to that, to go that far. Yeah, that scene needs to play out that way. Otherwise, it. It's going to feel not quite a slap in the face, but a disservice. And then he's got to see Janice mm -hmm. and go, Janice, hi, and like hug her. And, you know, and then they, you could have Beth show up and you could have his wife show up, mm -hmm. you know, and that they, they were debating. Well, the only reason that Terry Hatcher wasn't his wife when he left home in that episode was because she wasn't available at that time. For all I know, it could have been the Lois and Clark thing. But guess what? She She's can't free. now. He's free now because I got to see her the other week. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, you could do all that. And then whatever happened, and then he could be there looking over the computer, trying to help with, with whatever Ben's current problem is. You can have him, Sam, walk into the accelerator and have a conversation with Ben. You know, mm. hi. Oh, are you Dr. Beckett? You know that just to have that conversation. Yeah. That's come on. I mean, yeah. there's so Pretty, much because it it wouldn't be the first time Sam was the hologram. Exactly, and you could also have either before this happens or after because of time travel. Mm -hmm. You could still have Ben cross paths with Sam leaping. Mm -hmm. They run into each other, and they and you get to have the buddy cop episode at least once a season of the two of them together. Mm -hmm. You can always do that. Yeah, and if they really wanted to get somewhat interesting, they could even have, say, Sam's retired from leaping, but he still pops in present day to consult yeah. whatever. They could still have Sam and Ben cross paths because we don't know where Sam went while he was leaping for exactly. freaking however long. And, and Deborah Pratt can still do her movies. She mm -hmm. can still have because she loves Scott Bakula as she should. Yeah, you can have him go. I, I, you know, it, which between you and me, ideally, that's better. If you're going to do a Sam Beckett movie, you don't have him already leaping. You mm -hmm. can wrap up that half of it on the series, bring in the ratings, show the powers that be. Look at our ratings. We got Sam. Yeah. Now she goes and goes. All right, I want to send them back out. So mm -hmm. now she writes the story where it's an easier starting point. Yeah. And build to his reason for leaping again. Mm -hmm. And now it's self-contained. It doesn't mess with the show. I mean, and, and it could be done in a contained manner where at the end he does come home. And yeah. he doesn't, you know, it's that way, that way, if for whatever reason the movie's not as successful as they want, well, they don't have that dangling thread. Right. And I don't care if it's a TV movie. I, I just yeah. let her do I mean, it. Heck, look at look at Columbo. Columbo technically was nothing but TV movies. Right. Stretched out over how many decades? Right. Right. 
It, well, there you have it. And as a matter of fact, when I talked to the people from MacGyver, the writers and producers would say, we looked at it as doing every episode was a one hour movie. It was self-contained. It can You can mention things, but it can also stand on its own. You know, so it's only the only thing that can hurt any of these shows is short sightedness. Mm -hmm. um, so now let's get to the rumors. All right, let's let's hear these rumors. Now, this I got from both shows and the guests that they have had on. Okay. Now, one of the, I don't know, execs or writers or what, I don't remember what part he played, but one of the people that have to do with the new series, they had on and it was neat because they're discussing whatever episode was on that week. And they said, you know, the guests that have come on, uh, Deborah Ann Wall was on. You had, you know, this great actor, that actor. That. And it is true because I said the same thing to um, certain people that I said, you, you need to be on Quantum Leap. This is a nice showcase. Because mm -hmm. even though you're only in one episode, Dean Aylesworth was one of them. Yeah. It, it gives them it gives them a chance to really flex their, their acting. And yeah, they, they are the co-star. Yeah. They, you know, it, so, it gives them a chance to shine. So they said to, to him, who would you love if you had a dream guest to, to come on, an actor? Mm -hmm. Who would you like? And he said, well, there is one guy I would like on, and everybody kind of chuckled, meaning Scott Bakula. Right. Now, they didn't press him on it. Right. But he said, you know, there's one guy I would love to have on, and it's looking like it's going to happen this upcoming season. Good. Now, the fact that nobody else on the podcast went, what and like you know really got into it showed amazing restraint on their part oh absolutely because we both know countless hosts that would just be like who 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 right you know? right so they he said it he hinted at it and then they allowed him to back away they kind of went oh <laughs> and then they moved on smart okay so there's the one thing okay two uh, Martin Garrow, I believe, has said early on, we are never going to give up getting Scott Bakula on the show. We are giving him carte blanche to do whatever he wants with his character. You tell us where you want Sam to, to be and do, we will make it happen. Also, one of the podcasters said that they found out that the first two episodes of this next season, which... By the way, they never took a break. They filmed the season finale, and then they just filmed the next one right after it. Like, there's which no realistic, break. Yeah, which realistically is the smart way to do things because of continuity and just if they've got the ability, do it. They're, they're filming season five now. Um, and also, yeah, exactly. When this comes back, let's, let's not do that start and stop because I'll tell you, that didn't help anybody who was a new viewer. You and I know enough to go, they're taking a couple weeks off for whatever stupid reason to show the voice or the yeah. sound or the farts crap, whatever. Football or Yeah, what? but the we would go, all right, we know it's not the season finale because we can tell, but also, hey, wait, I could just type on my phone. Oh, no, they got this many episodes. I yeah. can relax. Well, and, I, and something I think is funny, like I, I remember you and I were talking – and it was right around the time they had just announced that the show had gotten renewed. Because right. we got the news that it got renewed a lot quicker than I think we expected. But then if you do a, a Google oh, search, guess what? claiming the show got canceled. It's like, come on. No, it hey, didn't. Wait. They said one of the reasons that they got such an early pickup was because they showed the network what they had planned for season two. Ooh. And they went, oh, well, what, what do we mean? Yeah, you go. Green, green lit. That's why Good. they got it that quick. Good. Yeah, that's the ratings on, on uh, streaming were so good. Yeah, and that tells me that whatever, whatever shift needed to happen at NBC finally happened. Because I know at NBC, there for a while, shows were getting canceled like really early on before they even got a chance to really develop. Right. Uh, and the other thing that they said was apparently for the first two episodes, it's a closed set. Really? 
Ah, uh, now why? So that that's a that's a pretty big indicator of some. Like what what other reason, unless Sam is there, would you? Yeah do a closed set there's no you're not bringing al back unfortunately I, I, well i mean unless somebody knows some necromancy or, or or something i don't know but right yeah like like why else would they have a close set yeah. unless you have scott bacula there yeah there it, it's got to be scott bacula or something that's going to break our brains because we didn't think of it but it's got to be scott bacula it's got to be mean, scott bacula yeah because I'll tell you the other thing, too. As much as I love Scott Bakula and everybody loves Scott Bakula, I swear to God, if this series comes and goes and he was never part of it, that will cause such anger amongst yeah. all of us. Because, again, he's the guy who's been fighting for it, too, with Deva Pratt. He, every time they do an interview, he's like, I'm hoping they bring it back. I'm hoping they bring it Trying to bring it back. I'm always available. Well, now. Yeah. It's like, so the fact that it's a closed set, that is that is a high indicator of what we're suspecting is happening. Right. It's gotta be. It's gotta be. I just, for the love of God, please, please be. Yeah. Please be. Because you know what? The 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 rest of the cast, as we said, is wonderful, and they already have their feet under them. Mm -hmm. They don't need Scott Bakula to keep them afloat. Right. But you do need to close that circle. Yeah. Or at least continue that circle and bring him in. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, come on. Yeah. And and they also said this new season they're going to focus, now that they don't have the, the mystery box element, mm -hmm. they're going to have much more of the dynamic of the deeper questions, the personal conversations, the, you know. Yeah. Which right. I think they did, a, I think they did a, a good job filtering that in with everything else. Yes, they did. Yeah. Yes, they did. Uh, but imagine now you take away that mystery box part. You have more time. Gives them more time to do that and just get things to marinate more. It's like so I liked how in this season or in the first season they showed that Ben is cut from a similar cloth to Sam, where right. he's good at just talking with people. Yep. And like yep. Uh, the episode, second to last episode, where he was the stewardess and That's having great. that conversation with the. Uh, the rich kid right that like there was a moment in that conversation i'm like i could see sam having a similar conversation not the same conversation right but a similar conversation and i think that's a smart way to go about it you know you see the similarities but it's not oh well that's just a carbon copy and that's what makes this such a good continuation. On Fate's Wide Wheel, they they really get into the, the guts of that type of thing. And they're like, boy, if you listen to the way he said this line or the way that they wrote Ben, and they talk about how he's similar to Sam and where he's not similar to Sam in a good way. Like, like mm -hmm. you know, Sam can distance himself if he needed to. Mm -hmm. uh, if he had to gun down somebody, he would gun down somebody. Mm -hmm. And isn't that guy yeah and i like that me too it, me too i don't want a carbon copy carbon. of sam exactly and you could even see the same with addison being similar to al in some regards but then also others where not so much there there was there was a, a line or two the way that she said or acted during that what the episode that you mentioned where mm -hmm. she's kind of giving them some crap and kind of making fun of them you know, blah, blah, blah. i'm like oh out there i love that and it wasn't intentional but i'm like yeah she's she's lightening up now and she's going to be more mm -hmm. fun because i remember them saying uh, poor caitlin her first episode they're like oh she's wooden like that's mm -hmm. not nice it's the first episode she's yeah. there to tell him stuff and get out we're not yeah. getting into the lovey-dovey personality stuff the same thing like jen why is jen there well now you know and now yes. she's more rounded and she's got more and character I, quirks absolutely it, it's yeah. just so so very well done like i'm gonna try to get jess to sit down and watch it with me because it sounded like she's interested in watching because she watched the original series you she know to watch this i what? think i think she i think she would love it i think she, you guys are gonna be cosplaying as those characters and you know, make it yeah. stickers or whatever for that. Well, because it's ironically, that type I, got of thing. A, I got an idea for the damn cards. So, well, there you go. But yeah, okay. So that's that. Okay. Buckle up! I can't wait. I can't believe it's gonna. 
first of all, we're going to be so busy in June alone. Besides our personal stuff we have going on on the weekend, mm -hmm. so many movies are coming out. Yes, Indiana Jones. I got the I got the six inch figure. The first I was going to say I saw you got the six inch figure. Yeah. yeah, getting the other any any indie figure of him in his outfit. I'm getting so there's yeah. like four others coming out that I'm I'm already. Got. Um, I think what I'd seen online, it looks like there's going to be six to start, and then right, right, right. But um, indie couple Marvel movies. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Flash. I mean. Mikey just went through the list with me and we're like, oh man. Because yeah, it's our our weekends are shot because I have a high school reunion. We have a wedding to go to. You know, he's got stuff. He's he's now, do you have to go to these things? Yeah. Yeah. Th this is Cindy's one of Cindy's oldest friends, her wedding. Okay, well, yeah. Uh the high school reunion. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's fun. I but missed my 20th because COVID. No, oh. well, <laughs> not because I had it. It was in the middle of COVID, so. But that means that that's a Saturday, and then our Sundays are busy. So Friday's probably going to be movie night. Friday would be your all best of June. Day. Oh, and then we're going camping at the end of June. Oh man, yeah. I mean, I, the, it's shot. It it it's going to be chaos. So. Okay, you got to see, yeah, but we got to see her movies. I can't, I can't be spoiled. I don't want anything ruined. Um, I'm excited for uh, the Indiana Jones movie. I've heard it's going to be like three hours, uh, two and a half, or two and a half. Okay, two and a half. which I'm here for. I yes, and again, there's rumors that they're not going to do whatever the TV series they were going to do, which I think was going to be an animated series, which I'm not going to believe is true. Because I didn't hear anything officially from Disney canceling it. Yeah, I, I that would be stupid. That would until, be so freaking stupid. Yeah, and until we Jones is one of those things that you should like Batman. You should always have a cartoon going. Yeah, should, it's one of those things out. that until until it's released from the mouse itself, I don't you know right. I treat it as rumor mill. Um, so. Before we run out of time, because I know this is going to eventually go, hey, you only got 10 minutes left. Um, I want to hop on other things. Uh, right. You're still loving your Chicago PD now that you're watching it. Yes, the Chicago PD has been really good. Uh, yeah. I don't remember what episode I'm on because I'm, I'm splitting that with a couple other things so that I don't get too far behind on any one thing. But I've been enjoying that. Uh, I watched all of uh, Poker Face. Okay, I only saw the first episode so far. It has a Columbo feel to it. Intentionally, the lettering is uh -huh. Columbo. Yeah. Well, uh, Ryan Johnson had said he got the idea from it from Columbo, yeah. treating each episode as a standalone love murder it. mystery. Love love it. Love and it. I love the approach that they do with it. Um, ten episodes, relatively quick. Um, just phenomenal. I love it. And even the way uh, uh, Nikki... I can't think of her last name. The the main actress that's in sure. it. You could almost see her being a, a female Columbo just with the way she's like, what's the name of that thing? Or what's right. that, you know, wonderful. Absolutely well, that's what they did. Way. I mean, that was all intentional because they, they're, exactly. they're not going to try and be Columbo. There's no other Columbo. Oh, yeah, no, no. It's just, but, it kind of has that feel to it, which yeah. makes it more endearing. Exactly. Um, but yeah, it's very well done. The second episode... <laughs> Involves a sub. It involves something that happens at Subway. So that was kind of a weird thing to have happen, and then me going back to working at Subway. And you're enjoying that, by the way, Subway. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the people I work with are pretty fun. Um, the work's not that difficult. So I mean, yeah. it enables my mind while I'm putting subs together to to work on ID designs in my head, or oh, I got to talk to Mac about this, or I yeah. got this idea or that idea. Um, That's good. And hey, you're putting money in your pocket, and it's yeah, it's extra money, money that I can say, hey, you know, Jess, won't we go catch a movie, my treat? Or are you done with your worry? For the you most made, part, you, okay. You made back, so you're the the yeah. I mean, we're still dealing with like the ripples of the ripples from it, but but you're not financially in the uh oh no, so. no. okay. Good, 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 good. So I mean, um, but yeah, um. But yeah, it's been fun, you know, learning how they do the subs or the yeah, not the subs, how they do the bread, the cookies, and stuff like that. It's entertaining. I do not eat the cookies all day long. Those are the best cookies. Cameras. 
<laughs> oh, I'm still take. Here's my although, wallet. I'd be dying. Although, the first although I will say, at the end of each shift, I'll usually like you know, here's a here's a buck. I'll grab a cookie. You know, the raspberry macadamia. I'm I'm good. That's yeah, they got the ra the raspberry cheesecakes. Mm -hmm. yum, yum 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 yum. Pretty good one. Um, macadamia. It's funny, like depending on who I work with, I'll know how much work I have to do. Like the one girl that I work with, she is she's management material. She knows her stuff. And uh, like she'll usually she'll leave two lists, one for the other guy to take care of and one for me to take care of because she knows I'll actually do the work. Mm. Sure. Uh, he's a young kid. He doesn't know any better. But uh, so like today we had to, you know, do extra bread partway through the day because we realized we were starting to get hit with the bread uh, or hit on the bread a lot quicker because it was a nice day. People were stopping by. Hey, I'll grab a foot long instead of a six inch or whatever, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's been pretty good, you know. Good. So with, I want to ask you about, the, we're, we got like 10 minutes left. Okay. Um, I want to ask you with Chicago PD, did you see the one with the fire starter that was part of like a three-parter or whatever? Uh, the, the guy that kidnapped Nadia? Or wait. In the elevator. If I oh, yeah, that, that guy. Yeah. That's I one of my that, favorite yeah, episodes. Episode. Yeah, that was like an episode or two before Nadia's. That was so good. That mm -hmm. was so good because, I mean, he's such a good bad guy. I was sorry to see it end. Yeah. He's blowing up cop cars. Mm -hmm. I, that, that was so good. And uh, another one that <laughs> jumps into my head. They find the baby in the duffel bag on the shore hanging in a tree. Haven't gotten to that episode yet. Buckle up. That's a great self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. No. Um, it's it's a great episode that if you were gonna get somebody hooked and you could only pick a couple, that would be one. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the show as a whole, like every episode's been pretty stellar. Like and they're never gonna stop. Yeah, and the characters, all of them have like been really interesting. Like uh she's a patrolman right now. Yes. Pretty much outright said i will be part of which i believe mm -hmm. uh there was something where her partner you know she hit his her partner's bag fell over and like a syringe came out and i'm like really we're gonna do this storyline and then like an episode or two later she like calls him out on it or says something to him and he's like oh no it's because of you know yeah of this and it's like Oh, okay. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, you know, like they do not do the cliche at all. It, it they don't tend to do the cliches at all. I mean, there's a couple things that where they kind of like get close, but I mean, any show is going to do that. I know but this show has been really good, and I've really enjoyed it. Well, I just want to remind everybody a couple things before we go. Uh, please spread the word. Uh, share this episode. Uh, it's on YouTube. If you want to see our smiling faces, if you want yep. to listen to us, see us in our various collections of craziness behind us. Yeah. Uh, if you just listen to it, share that too. Just tweet it, whatever. It helps. Um, we don't make any money on this, but we do want to make sure our efforts are not in vain. Right. Uh, so if you can share this and have people smile and enjoy it, our job is done. Oh, absolutely. Um, and also, thank you to anybody that decides to um, contribute to our Patreon. Absolutely. Uh, I don't mention names typically because I don't know how people feel about that. Yeah. So I see it and I try to reach out if I if there's a way that I can send back a thank you, I try to. But if you haven't gotten one, just reach out to me and I'll I'll gladly tell you. Also, it gives me an excuse to send you something. Absolutely. Um, let's see. We have our stores. Yep. Uh, Nate's is? Commissioncredentials.com. I do all kinds of fun novelty IDs. And uh, newest upgrade to our equipment is I can do color on front and back of the IDs. So the IDs actually look more complete now. And we have a um, uh, T Public. Public. I think we have a red bubble. Red bubble. And there's a great artist who's been doing stuff for the audio series. Um Warlock Weirdo TV is his handle on uh Twitter. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, but I give him credit. He he sends me stuff for the MacGyver SG1 audio series and he does quantum oh, yeah. loop stuff. So I try and throw his stuff on there because he makes them for that reason. Mm-hmm. Check out his artwork. Uh, if you just go to the Forever Adventure Network, we have links for all of this. We have yep. blogs, we have these videos, we have the stores. We also have a Discord if you want to. Oh, thank you. The Discord is the new thing. Yeah, Uh, Nate, push that on your own because I don't know what I'm talking about. And I'm going, hey, everybody, if you like Discord. Yeah, we got a Discord. with us. Yeah, which, you know, any listeners, if you want to hop in the Discord, we do have a link that is a permanent link, I believe, on the uh, Forever Adventure Network website. All you got to do is click on it. Go through the couple steps that Discord makes you do, and then you can hop in. And and we have great conversations. conversations. That's the thing. I, I, I'm trying to rally everybody for the for each podcast and audio series. Like, let's get chatting. That's that's yeah. the community. Yeah, I mean, I know the I know the Discord server doesn't have a lot of people on it right now. So, right. So hop on there. Come on. I, I oh, absolutely. We got all kinds of fun stuff. You got. Yeah, you I love when people. You, get the, you know. Join the conversation. Essentially. Yeah, I love when people do that and, and ask questions. And now we're going down a rabbit hole. So yeah. welcome to the rabbit hole. But uh, all right, we're going to let everybody go. We'll be back and do another one of these as soon as possible. Yep. Probably um, before June since somebody's going to be busy all June. Uh, tell me about it. And then we'll, we'll have to chat after June because after I wake up from whatever yeah. nap I'm going to have to have. I'll have to we'll have to catch everybody up and share our movie reviews and all that happy stuff. Uh, but in the meantime, everybody, thank you for listening. Share. Thanks like, for coming follow. Go to the yeah. Forever Adventure Network. Check it out. We do a lot for you. And remember, as always, stay excited. The Never Gets Old podcast is part of the Forever Adventure Network and made possible by your donations through Patreon. If you'd like to help us out, please go to the Forever Adventure Network by Mac Jackson on Patreon and help by subscribing, rating, and reviewing wherever podcasts are heard. We also have a Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube channel. The show's music is by Harmony Constant and available wherever music is sold. Thanks for listening, everybody. And remember, stay excited. The Forever Adventure Network. Welcome to the adventure. Has MacGyver inspired you to be kind and creative? Has Jack O'Neill inspired you to be a leader and be sarcastic? Well, then please check out the MacGyver podcast where we celebrate Richard Dean Anderson and all of his iconic characters. We have life stories, episode reviews, and great conversations with actors and the people behind the scenes. We also have merchandise, blogs, art, and so much more, all through the Forever Adventure Network. Join us today, and remember, stay creative, everyone. The Forever Adventure Network. Welcome to the adventure.